Hello and welcome to chapel at your chapel at Luther Seminary, Chapel of the Incarnation. My name is Pastor Jenny Grangard. I'm the seminary pastor here. I use she, her, hers pronouns. We are glad to gather in this space at Luther, which we acknowledge is on Dakota land, and we give thanks for all who have tended to it throughout time. We welcome you this day from wherever you are and encourage you to say hello in the chat from where you're calling in from. The grace, let me set this down, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of our ancestors, you are our source of life and our hope for enduring. Encourage us by your Holy Spirit in all that is set before us, that we may not grow weary or lose heart. Through Jesus Christ, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen. I invite each of you to grab your Bible and read along with me in this text before us today from Hebrews chapter 12, just the first three verses. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Word of God, word of life. Siblings in Christ, Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of the Triune God. Welcome to this 151st academic year. I love these biblical images for the journey with Jesus. The writer to the Hebrews has peppered his book with these images of education and agriculture and economics, and in the reading for today, of course, sports. The writer invites us to wrestle with what it means to follow Jesus in the midst of difficult times. The focus is to strengthen a community of believers in Christ in the face of opposition. Any of you feeling a wall of opposition these days? Anybody wonder if you have the strength to take one more step or bear one more story of another black or brown or indigenous sibling murdered, hear one more political misrepresentation and deceptive ad, one more Zoom call, one more story of apocalyptic climate devastation. This deep questioning of God in the midst of trials is a matter of life and death. Now the writer to the Hebrews won't let us engage in esoteric theological arguments disconnected from the lived realities each one of you are facing today on our journey with Jesus. The writer invites us to journey with a Jesus with skin on, that is the real, complicated, conflicted failings and sinful ways in which we are all enmeshed. So what is this journey with Jesus described in Hebrews? I have heard this reading anew in recent months. You know, I loved sports as a kid. I played basketball and volleyball and softball and baseball, and yes, I was even on the track team. Now, I wish I could say that I ran like the wind, but in reality, I was winded when I had to run. But I could throw a shot put and a discus. I have loved this text and the very idea that the journey with Jesus meant encouragement to persevere, work hard, run the race. In recent months, I have heard the second part of this verse with new ears. Let us run with perseverance the race 
that is set before us. The race that is set before us, not the race you choose, not the conditions of your own making, but the race that is set before us. I doubt any of us in this community wanted the race that we are in the midst of right now. I sure didn't sign up to work from home for six months and counting, separated from you all and the vitality of this community of students and staff and faculty and board members and alums and donors coming together. And I have heard the stories from some of you of the struggles to work and study and also homeschool your children. I have heard of the strain of separation that some of you are enduring, separation from friends and family, or the pressure to care for an ill family member, or the pain of standing by as a loved one is hospitalized or in a nursing home, isolated at precisely the time when a hug and an embrace and a visit are most needed, or the ways that white privilege and white supremacy are so deeply embedded in systems and structures and all the things that have been tried seem to continue to fail. The ways that the stress of relentless climate catastrophes creates this perpetual sense of fear and anxiety, and yet this is the race that has been set before us. It's not the race we signed up for, but it's the one that is set before us. This text invites us into a coherent story about how God is in the midst of this suffering restoring creation shattered by sin. Our journey with Jesus is part of God's divine action and calls us to act. God's call to be faithful and to act takes many forms, to protest the violence done to black and brown and indigenous bodies every day, to volunteer in a food bank or homeless shelter, to tutor a child who's stuck at home, or a second grader who's trying to figure out how to read via Zoom, to offer hospitality. All of these calls to action cohere with a larger story of how God is redeeming the world. And that gives us a purpose, a vision, a heart, and a faith to persevere. By opening ourselves humbly to journey with Jesus, we glimpse how the shards of our lives are gathered and redeemed into God's ultimate victory. This journey with Jesus is also a word of community. This is a race that is set before us together. You and I are not left to our own devices to figure out what it means to walk with Jesus. The cloud of witnesses in this place includes this faculty who cares so much about your learning and your journey with Jesus as you deepen your knowledge of scripture and theology and you test ideas that you disagree with, maybe even disagree with deeply, and then are stretched to see how God is bigger than you could ever have imagined. This staff too believes in this mission and walks with you and each other through the vicissitudes of this part of your journey, and a leadership team and a board who steward the institutional mission and vision and values as together. We are in this journey with Jesus, called to be a particular community in this academic year. This call to community includes not only this time and this place. Earlier in the text in chapter 11, we read that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. By faith, Noah respected God's warning. By faith, Abraham obeyed. By faith, Sarah gave birth. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea. By faith, Rahab lived. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. This community with whom you journey stretches over this time and place. There are many who have gone before you. There is a great cloud of witnesses who have been sustained by faith in the midst of turbulent times. But this journey with Jesus is also a word of judgment. We dare not turn faith into a good work. A colleague of mine many years ago would always begin teaching his Old Testament class with this call, the Lord is against you, 
to which the students would respond, and against you too. It's been a persistent reminder for me over the years that we dare not domesticate God into our own private domain, presuming we are always on the right side of a matter, condemning others who are not as enlightened or up to speed on what we presume to be the truth. The word of judgment in this text is also a word of judgment for each of us. The faith about which the text speaks is not our accomplishment if we just worked a little harder, but is revealed in the opening verses of the book of Hebrews. In many and various ways, God spoke to the people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. God who speaks in Jesus is the very same God who spoke to Sarah and Abraham and Moses and Deborah and Miriam and Jeremiah. And God speaks a new word in that it is the last word, the ultimate word for the whole of history. God speaks this new word in continuity with all previous words. Because this journey with Jesus is addressed to you and to me. We are the ones to whom God is speaking. If you are listening to a lecture, however thrilling it might be, if the lecturer suddenly calls your name and says, Jenny or Mark, there is a heightened sense of alertness as you wait for what comes next. Know that whatever comes next is meant for you. And you want to be alert for the appropriate kind of response you can make. Now, in this time, God is speaking to us in Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. God is calling you and me by name. Pay attention for the various ways in which God might call you to respond. This journey with Jesus is indeed a challenging journey. Run with perseverance the race that is set before you calls us each through the way of the cross, through the disciplines of prayer and study and worship, and yes, even through the deserts of God's silence. A silence can be de that can be deafening. A silence and alienation that is taken into God's own being through Jesus on the cross. There is no place so desperate and desolate that Jesus Christ has not been there ahead of you, not instead of you. The journey with Jesus calls us into and through Lent and Holy Week. This text is assigned, this Hebrews 12 text is assigned for the reading on the Wednesday of Holy Week. There are days when I feel like we have been in Holy Week for six months and counting. I sometimes feel like we are stuck in an endless loop of systemic racism, white supremacy, white privilege, perpetual violence against black and brown and native bodies, climate change that seems irreversible, and a political system which seems to have abandoned any notion of the common good. It is a challenging journey with Jesus because we're not in control of where it might lead us. And to be sure, we each have the option to turn in a different direction. The journey with Jesus is the way of the cross, a way that we might rather avoid. But it's a journey to which we have been called. The prayer at the end of morning prayer reads in part, you have called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils, and I always add, and joys unknown. For I think part of God's challenging word for us is to embrace the joy that is part of the journey of the cross. But what enables us to see this word of joy in this cross-filled world? It is that God speaks a hopeful word. God's hopeful word is neither illusory hope in a world of wishful thinking or a word in the power of positive thinking, that if we just willed ourselves to be happier, uh, it would all work out. It's not a word that's dependent on our action. It's a word of hope in the certainty that God's word is the final word, the last word, the guaranteed word in the final outcome of history. Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. Jesus has triumphed over evil and death on the cross. Death 
no longer has the last word. If the outcome of the whole of history is secure in God's future, then that frees us for our way of being in the world today. We no longer need to be consumed with self-preservation and can freely offer ourselves alongside our neighbors for the problems and struggles facing the world. There is hope for us and for this world. The writer to the Hebrews tells us that the God of history, the one who in many and various ways spoke to the people of old by the prophets and now speaks through God's Son, is the one in whom we can place our trust. This journey with Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit is a journey that is addressed to us particularly and calls us to the challenges and joys unknown, a journey that beckons us from the future and gives us hope for now, and it is a word to which we can entrust our lives. Our reading for today concludes with the encouragement that you may not grow weary or lose heart. That seems a fitting word for us as we commence our journey with Jesus this 151st academic year. Amen. at this opening of the academic year service to recognize new faculty and staff 
or folks that have changed their portfolio of work. So I'm going to invite those faculty and staff, when I call your name, I want you to give us a double-handed sign of praise and hello so that everybody can see who you are and when we have the chance to be together again, we can have a wonderful kind of homecoming. So first I want to say uh, some words about uh, a couple of new faculty that have joined us. The first is uh, Jennifer Pites, the visiting professor of New Testament. Uh, we're glad to have you with us, Jennifer. Make sure to you raise your hands. Uh, the other colleague who is new to us is Mark Tranvik, who's our new professor of Reformation history and theology. We've also had some faculty promotions this time when a faculty member's work is uh, recognized in their years of service and their scholarly contributions and they are um, go through a, a rigorous review and I want to share with you two colleagues who are actually on sabbatical this year uh, Professor Caroline Lewis and Professor Amy Marga both advanced in rank to full professor and Professor Terry Elton who will be with us uh, this academic year uh, so we're glad that we at least have one of our three women full professors uh, here. We're so glad for your leadership, Terry. We also had a mid-summer, end-of-summer event where we elected not only our new Vice President for Academic Affairs and Academic Dean, Professor Joy Moore, but she was also advanced in rank uh, and tenured uh, to full professor. So we really celebrate the gifts of these faculty colleagues. We've also had some new staff uh, working. Dan Bielenberg, uh, one of our uh, graduates, is now serving as an intern in our faith lead work. And Dale DeBias, who actually has faculty status and is a new director of library services. We're so glad to have these colleagues. And then Arlene Flancher, Arlene Wave, is our innovation program coordinator. And some of you have met Ashley Jordan, who arrived just before the lockdown in March, is our new Associate Director of Human Resources. Ashley, give away. Maria May, who's a Director or <coughs> excuse me, Contextual Learning Program Specialist. <coughs> I'm not used to talking to myself when I'm isolating at home, so forgive me. Um, we've also welcomed Grace Pomeroy as the director of the Stewardship Leaders Program. Grace, too, came to us right after the lockdown began. And then Ken Reinhout joined us as the director of Institutional Effectiveness Assessment and Research. Bethany Reifmeyer, a donor engagement coordinator, and Allison Roberts, a philanthropic advisor. Would all of those whom I named give a big wave so that folks can see who you are and scroll through the gallery look on your screens? And I would encourage you to send them a note of welcome. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to start a new adventure and a new vocation, and a new place, in a new community during a pandemic when no one can be around, or at least very few. So I want to say a special word of thanks to all these colleagues in this community who are making a way and making a welcome. We've also had a couple of colleagues who've had uh, some title changes. Dawn Alex now serves as Director of Communities and Coaching, and Ron Hosek now serves as building operations staff and emergency personnel. And finally, two colleagues, Katie Langston takes on a new title as Director of Digital Strategy and Executive Communications Specialist, and Leslie Ortiz, who was advanced to serve as Assistant Dean for Academic Affairs. I want you to join me as we offer a prayer of blessing for these faculty and staff members. And again, if you haven't already, please switch to gallery view so that we can see each other and extend your hands in blessing to these people 
as we surround them with prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for all of life and for our common calling as your servants for the work of your church and for the ministries of word and sacrament and service. We give, you, we give you thanks for our siblings in Christ, whom you call to be leaders in your church, these staff and faculty members in new roles on our campus. Bless these, your dear servants, in their work here at Luther Seminary, as they live out their callings in faith and hope. Through the witness and mission of this seminary and seminaries across the world, May we, your church, join courageously in your work of compassion, mercy, justice, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our way. Amen. Now gathered with the whole people of God, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need of God's tender and loving care. Holy One, you have revealed yourself to us in the servant life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Unite your church with the inspiration of your Holy Spirit and guide the students, faculty, and staff of Luther Seminary as we begin a new academic year. As one people, servants of the gospel and surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, may we reveal your love in our speaking and in our living. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Call us anew to fight to the fight against climate change and inspire us to care for all that you have made. God in your mercy. Holy One, we have created divisions that you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Purge the sins of racism, white supremacy, and gender inequality, and help us to honor the unique gifts of every beloved person you have made. God, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Holy One, you care for all who are in need. Empower those working for justice and equality. Strengthen healthcare workers and essential employees. Heal those who are sick and bring comfort to all who are suffering with COVID-19. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, bring hope. We remember especially those on the hearts and minds of this community who we name before you now, silently or aloud. God, in your mercy. In our prayer. Okay. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for all the holy people who have gone before us, especially today, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Sustain us in your mission until the day when you bear us up to join the saints in light. Comfort all who mourn with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. God, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Also, also with you. Also with you. Also with you. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace. We invite you to unmute and share peace, peace in the community. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Peace be with you.
you to unmute your microphones for the litany. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. Teach us, Teach us your, your ways, ways oh God. Oh God. Take knowledge rather than gold, for all that you may desire cannot compare with wisdom. Teach us your ways, oh God. Ways, oh God. Ways, oh God. Know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Teach us Teach your us ways, your ways, ways oh God. 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 I hereby declare the opening of the 2020-21 academic year in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.